Hi everyone, welcome to the program Breaking Frontiers and we are ready to start together with you a new journey to boost your mind and enlarge your vision. Remember that when the message, the gospel, the word of God enters our brain, there is a revolution that happens. You start to see things different and in a powerful way and we're going to help you to do so. I'm here together with Pastor Gilbert from Macau, and we will be together for 30 minutes today. Yes, Bishop, and it will be a blessing, and I'm sure you will be greatly blessed watching this program. For the meantime, let's share the link of this program with all our friends. Let them know that Breaking Frontiers has just started, and we'll see you after the break. Whether I feel like it or not, I will wake up and get out of bed on time. Whether I feel like it or not, I will fulfill my duty to my body and do my exercise routine every morning. Whether I feel like it or not, I will do my work first and have fun later. Whether I feel like it or not, I will keep my promises. Whether I feel like it or not, I will forgive those who have hurt me. Whether I feel like it or not, I will make the necessary sacrifices to achieve my goals. Whether I feel like it or not, I will always tell the truth. Whether I feel like it or not, I will resist the temptation to spend money I don't have. Whether I feel like it or not, I will stay away from people who don't add anything to my life. Whether I feel like it or not, I will not allow my heart to rule my mind. Whether I feel like it or not, I will keep my eyes from looking at what they shouldn't. Whether I feel like it or not, I will do the right thing. Whether I feel like it or not, whether you like it or not, whether the world loves me or hates me for it, I will keep my faith, always, because I don't live by what I feel. Welcome back to Breaking Frontiers. The topic today is about problems, solving problems. And solving problems can be done in two ways. There are people that make a living out of solving problems. So a problem occurs, then they look into the problem and they find a solution. There are other people, they prevent problems. They solve problems before they actually begin. Yes, these people are also very valuable. So those two people, they make a living out of it. Now, talking about problems, nobody can live a life trouble-free. Nobody can be free from problems in general. You will always have problems in your life, either big or small problems, but nobody can really say that they never had a problem. Now, we can prepare ourselves so that when problems arise, we are well prepared to overcome them. So, for example, we are running out of petrol and gas. We know that the earth only has a limit. There is not a bottomless pit with petrol. That's why the human being, through science, they invented an electric car. And this is being pushed everywhere around the globe. Electric cars is the future. So it's a problem that they are solving for the future, because they know that one day we're going to run out of petrol. Now, having said that, problems that occur, you know, out of the blue, that you do not expect, those are problems that you can turn into opportunities. Right, Pastor Gilbert? That's right, Bishop. When problem comes, we have to see them as opportunities to be blessed. To, to change our life, to have a breakthrough in life. We can't see problems as, you know, 
as problem, as something that will put you down and will discourage you. But you have to see it as an opportunity to change your life. We have the great example in the Bible of David who saw the giant Goliath as an opportunity to glorify God. And we say that if there was no giant, no Goliath, there would be no David. David made history. He is the, the man we know because he overcame Goliath. Maybe even unbelievers have heard of his story because David saw that challenge, that problem as a solution or as an opportunity to glorify God and to make history. So my friends, see your problem as an opportunity to change your life, for you to break through in this new year. We are going to see a testimony now and we'll be back with this topic after the break. It was actually in my secondary school it happened. Um, I was after the boy, you know, because um, he was putting things on Facebook about me, about the thing that happened with the, the death that I saw, you know, and I was, I was after him. But then I went to his house and then I banged him on the door and stuff. And then obviously we saw him and that, you know, because I was with a couple of my guys. And then, I don't know what came over, it's like I just blacked out, literally, I, I don't know what came over me. I, I just remember I was shaking, you know, just the thoughts that were going through my head. I was just picturing, you know, the little, the little boy that was just laying there because of, because of these guys. I can't imagine what I put that family through that day, you know. He, he, was, he had nothing to do with it. And as I said, as I went home, you know, literally I was feeling sick. Shaking, I didn't come out. Come, I didn't come out after that for about a week because I didn't want to come out. I was literally just—it's like I was traumatized. I was speaking to my mom about this, you know, about everything I got myself into. And she said that obviously from a young age I was already kicking off and stuff, but by 13 I was already involved in the gangs, the fighting. She said, and so I didn't really have that childhood. That's, and she said, she started noticing change for me from the age of 13. She started seeing, you know, finding knives in my bag, you know, random money popping up, phones that didn't belong to me, you know, at the age of 13. So that's when I already got myself involved. At the age of 16 I had two court cases with a massive criminal record. It started, you know, as just postcodes, areas. But then after I got, you know, personal, they would come after my family. I'll go after theirs. So a lot of money things were involved. We would leave each other dead if we could, you know. So it got that person. I had a close family family member at the time, you know, we used to call each other cousins. You know, I was taken, he was around five, I was taken to the shop. You know, a car speed hit him. You know, and I, I watched him die. You know, ambulance came and he was pronounced dead. The day after, you know, I was getting Facebook posts, comments, laughing at me. You know, saying I left him to die, all these things. From that, I wasn't the same again, you know. They just took someone that was like family to me, so. Even when I did these things, even if I felt guilty, you know, I was put in my mind, but they did this, so I'm gonna do even worse to them. Two years ago, I was. I had to move areas. I lived in Newham. I had to move out to Essex because um, I did a bank scam on someone. And all these people were after me. They knew where I lived. And I was at Tag at that time. So when I was out, my mum told me three months ago that about six guys, they ran into my house, smashed through my door. They told my little brothers to go upstairs. For me, that was, uh, I was hard to hear, you know. I was just speechless, you know. I was in tears. My mum was crying and was just trying to find the right words to say, but nothing was coming out. You know what? I, I, I hugged her and I said, I'm sorry, but nothing I said could have made up for, for what she went through. Just to hear from another point of view, I went and asked my little brother what happened as well. You know, and then uh, as he told me, you know, he was in my arms, he was crying. 
you know, and uh, he was telling me that, you know, sometimes he still hears, you know, my mum scream. Feels like he can still hear it. I feel just loved, not I love my life, but I was used to it. You know, I liked the power I had, the reputation I had, I had the sort of respect. You know, I thought if I left all of that, I have nothing. You know, I, if I left, if I stopped doing certain things, if I changed, these people that are around me, they wouldn't want to be around me anymore. You know, I wouldn't be where I was. I'd have literally nothing. So it was a sort of sense of fear, you know, and uh, yeah, I just really loved my reputation at the time. Many things I've tried, because I was, I was in the Youth Offenders, the yacht program for around two years, because when I finished my first nine months, I got arrested eight days later. I had to go straight back. You know, I tried um, counselling, but then ended, I ended up attacking my counsellor. So a lot of things I was trying. Even I had a, someone, a teacher in my school that was really trying to help me change. But I couldn't, you know. Everything, I was literally trying everything out there to change, but I was always being drawn back to what I used to do. I'm not allowed in my old area no more, so we got moved out to Essex. First, I, I wasn't seeing a lot of the old people I was seeing. I speak to them, I see them now and then. I wasn't really seeing much, so already I was sort of having that detachment, but then, you know, the girlfriend I was at the time, she brought me to the love school. Um, you know, she brought me to, to the church and stuff like that, you know. And from then, I just came off tag literally about a week before. So it was really, I needed a fresh start. You know, and then when I started speaking to people that went through the same thing, you know, probably even worse than me, they were telling me, no, you can, you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. From then I found out a motivation within me that I never felt before. The thing that really stuck with me is that God is always with you, isn't it? Because like, with me, I didn't trust people. I didn't have people to speak to. But even when I'm alone and I'm with my problems, I found it so nice that I'm not alone because I can just speak to God. I can find the strength for someone. And I'm not just speaking to, to anyone that can't really do nothing for me. I'm speaking to God who can empower me, that can strengthen me. From young, my mum was always telling me by 18 I'll be dead or I'll be in prison, you know, stuff like that. But for someone to actually say, you have potential, you know, God really wants to use you. For, for me, that was just like, it just shocked me. I want my family to be even more united. Because we, me and my mum, we don't argue, we don't fight like I used to, you know. We have deep talks. I give her advice. You know, my little brothers, they see me as an older brother now, but I, can, I, can, I take them out all the time. You know, they say they want to be like me. You know, um, I finally have a relationship with my brother, my older brother, where we couldn't speak before because I couldn't get through to him. But we speak now, maybe not as deep as I want it to be yet, but we speak. You know, I didn't see my, my dad, my real dad, for 11 years. I finally build a relationship with him now. I want to be an actor, I'm going back to college in September after I got kicked out, after no college would take me, you know, I'm part-time working, and I want to, um, I'm going into youth work, you know, youth offenders now, giving my story, give, telling them that, you know, you can change, I'm going into an area that I couldn't go before, giving my story, giving other youths hope, saying if I can change, you can do it, youths that used to look up to me, saying, oh, this guy's crazy, now I'm telling you, come, you can change as well, so, you know, this is my goal is to, people that was in my situation to get them out of that situation as well. If you're out there, what are you going to gain? Literally, you're going to always watch over your back. If you come and give it all to God and He takes care of you, you know, what have you got to lose? That's literally what it comes down to. You know, if it's a life or death situation, what, you're either going to be in prison, you're going to be dead. If you come and you give your everything to God, give God a chance to do something in your life, then what have you got to lose? You know. You give him everything, he gives you everything, and trust me, you'll be in a much better situation than you are now. Welcome back to Breaking Frontiers. Today we are talking about turning problems into opportunities, and we're touching on King David. Well, at the time when he faced Goliath, he was not a king. He was just a very simple, ordinary shepherd's boy. But he turned his situation around when he faced a giant problem called Goliath. When he did so, he changed the story of his life because people started looking at him differently. He got a special invitation by the king, King Saul at that time, and 
He got rewarded in many ways, tax exemption. He got rewarded by marrying the daughter of the king. He got, you know, special privileges, all that he conquered because he stood up to the problem. The problem didn't put him down. The problem was for him an opportunity. Probably he was thinking, if I'm the only person that will face the problem, and if I manage to overcome it, my situation will be completely different. And from there on, he made a name for himself. He became a household name, and he would never be the same again. And that needs to happen in the life of anybody that is facing a problem. Look at your problem starting from today in a different way. Right, Pastor? That's right, Bishop. We have a good example of the story of a man who went to a certain country and he was selling shoes. And when he went there, he saw that no one, no one was wearing shoes. People would walk on barefoot. And he said, I'm not going to be successful yeah. here in this country. I will not be able to, to sell any shoes because they don't wear shoes. They don't like shoes. But another man came and he saw that problem as an opportunity. And when he saw that everyone was not wearing shoes, so he said, then now I'm going to make a difference in this country. I will be able to sell shoes here because nobody here wears shoes. So he saw that problem as an opportunity. And if you begin to see the challenges you face in your life, the situation, difficulties, your problem as an opportunity to, to bless you, to change your life, so you will begin to see great improvements. You will see great changes in your life. Let's see another story, another testimony, and we'll see you after this testimony. My journey started in my parents' house. I used to see my parents uh, having constant arguments, daily arguments. My mom would always complain about my dad, addictions, affairs, um, his lack of love and care for the family. I was very young when I met this boy, which was, he was a bit older than me. He was involved with gangs and this took me to be involved with, with gangs as well. Drug addicts, toxic dependence, people involved with prostitution. My involvement was so much that I got I got myself um, addicted with cigarettes and alcohol. This relationship became abusive. He was aggressive due to the drugs and alcohol and all of his involvement on this. He became very aggressive towards me and the children. After a few years of, of fight, of, of hard work to change this relationship, it didn't work. I had to finish with it. We end up separating. A couple of years after, I've, I've met Ricardo with the hope that I will be happy now. Unfortunately, some time after, I found out that he was involved with drugs. He was a humanizer and he loved nightclubbing and nights out. When we came to the church, we received advice, help to transform, to change our, our, our relationship. I was encouraged to, to fight for it. That's when I realized as well that I had to change myself, the attitude, the luggage that I was carrying from my past, the low self-esteem that I had within me, I had to remove it and trust and believe again that it was it was possible to be happy and this was what helped me to, to actually accept the transformation, accept the fight. Today we, we have a wonderful relationship. We are married and very happy. We work together. We we make decisions together. We are a team. I cannot expect more. Um, keep dreaming to, to get better and better with the years come in the presence of God.
Welcome back to Breaking Frontiers. Our topic today is about turning a problem into an opportunity. And in a short while, we're going to make a prayer together with Pastor Gilbert. Before that, please be sociable, be friendly, and invite people to join the prayer. Perhaps even a family member that can benefit from that. All they need to do is, you know, you pick up your mobile phone, your device, and send out that invitation via Facebook, Messenger, WhatsApp, so that they can unite themselves in the prayer. All right? Yes, and now we are going to get ready for the prayer. We have here the holy oil, and you know you may always get a bottle of holy oil from your home, bring to your local UCKG Help Center or Succeed in Life Center, ask the pastor to bless it for you, and you will use it with us on Wednesdays and Saturdays in our prayers here on Facebook, okay? So let's anoint ourselves right now. And let's get ready for the prayer and we'll ask God to bless you in Jesus' name. Stretch out your hands here. My God, in the name of Jesus yes, Christ, Jesus. here right now, we ask you, Lord, to help your people to turn their problems into opportunities to change their lives, to revolutionize their lives. We pray, my Lord, in this moment that you help this person who is feeling down, discouraged, thinking that their problems are there and they will not be able to overcome their problems. Help them now, my God, to break frontiers. Help this person to achieve the blessing that they want to achieve. First, my God, take away all negativity from their mind. Take away all doubt, fears, everything that is trying to put this person down. Set them free right now, my God, and may your spirit come upon them to help them to look forward and to see their problems as opportunity to change their life. We bless you here right now, and we determine that your problems will become a solution for you. Your problems will become opportunities for you to make history, for you to have your name placed everywhere to glorify God. May the Lord bless your family. May the Lord bless your finances. May God enlighten now your minds. We bless you here, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Receive this blessing by faith, and you will be like David. You will be great in life. Yes, Bishop? Yes, and you can begin tomorrow, because tomorrow it's Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon. We have special meetings at the UCKG Help Center and Succeeding Life Center to help you take that first step, a first step in a new direction, a new life, all right? If you want to know the addresses, you can check them after the program and just give us a call, text us, and get in touch with us. This is it for today. May all of you have a wonderful day. God bless you abundantly. Bye-bye.